The Backdoor GA Podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steed Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by former Galway hurler Alan Cairns and former Galway manager Sir Farrell uh, to look back on a disappointing defeat for Galway in the end. We went in with a lot of hope uh, into the game that we could turn the reign all Ireland champions over, but it did not work out like that. A serious second half display from Limerick uh, where they won out on a final scoreline of 224 to 118. So that ends Galway's championship campaign and it'll see Limerick and Kilkenny face in the all Ireland final. Alan, how do you assess the performance and results uh, for Galway in their defeat to Limerick at the weekend? Uh, it's very disappointing, isn't it? Um, considering last year's performances where we probably should have beaten them. Um, only for a little bit of lack of composure and maybe they had a stronger bench to finish last year. Um, so disappointing year overall, as Henry said in his in his post match comments. You know, the Leinster final they should have won, uh, and then a, a very poor finish out to the season in terms of the second half or the second, the last whatever it was from twenty five minutes on they were blown out of it really. Um, in terms of maybe performance and tactics and energy and physicality and. Uh, depth of squad so probably sobering enough to be honest in terms of you know uh, he, as he said they didn't feel like they made progress and it probably is he's probably accurate in his, in his assessment Did they make progress for you this year sir? Is that to me Paul? Yeah Yeah uh, not really like I, I agree with Helen like we was disappointed from a goal point of view look the lads didn't go out there to play bad and for 25 minutes we're playing great stuff and six points up from then on we just seemed to lack energy like whether it was the, the physicality of Limerick I don't know like but uh, you know it was disappointing and it was the performance was disappointing because if you look at the we we'll say Limerick and Kilkenny and Clare their players kept going for the 70 minutes and like uh, even Clare being beaten they died with their boots on it was you know I'd say Henry and the management team kind of would be confused with it because after a good victory over Tip uh, even though only won by two points it felt we won by a lot more definitely like this was kind of a blowout after 25-28 minutes like and uh, you know it'll be kind of back to the drawing board and be kind of figuring out where it went wrong now a few of the breaks like went uh, Limerick's way and that always happens as most of the winning team but like uh, we're being beaten by a very good team Limerick are at full throttle again in, in the championship so far in Munster they weren't really at full throttle really they were just kind of getting there but now all of a sudden they seem to have found their mojo and like uh, you know we, we, we met them at their best and they are we have to realise that they are a very, very good team. Like, and we have to take the beating on the chain and learn from because we're beaten by a better team. There's no ifs or buts about it, really. What do you put the second half struggle down to, sir? Well, looking at it, you know, I was up at the match and we're up very high. Is that until like when you're doing a bit of kind of media work, you're up seven stories high, and we just seem to run out of energy. Like, we, like the, in the first twenty-five minutes or twenty-six or seven, we're moving and getting onto ball and breaking tackles. But after that, we just seem to lack energy. Even going in at half time, we looked quite energyless. Like, I don't know what. Now, I know they're training, and when they're not in the in that or Goal, they're probably in the gym. But like, whatever kind of training they're doing, it's not been shown. Like, they didn't show it last last uh, last Saturday. We just didn't finish. Like, forget about the hurling, we're beaten well in the hurling, but outside of that as well, like, we just didn't seem to have any, any kind of drive in us, and we just didn't, there was no real fight in, in kind of in the team in general, not blaming anyone, but like in general, we're just out fought. And the more physical it got, the more the, the more on top limit it got. So that, that's where I look at it. Like, and I know it's easy to talk from the side, it's hard to do, but like, uh, I would think they'll have to look at, at what kind of train, like, how they were so flat. That's the big thing, I'd say. That's what's haunting, I'd say, the management team, really. Stephen Allen, if you look at this early on and you look of the setback early on of Galang getting that goal in four minutes, puts Limerick 1-1 one, one to two points up. But even the response after that, Cahill Mannion gets a wonder goal, puts Galway up 1-3 uh, to 1-6 after 13 minutes. And like, things were looking really good then. They were looking really good. And the Limerick confused as well. And Willard Dunham going back into back. And even a couple of the puck outs, I was up high as well, like Sir, and... You know, we'd want, we'd lads drifting in unmarked behind the half back line for the long puck. So we think we got one free yeah. with Manning got, and that happened several times, but they weren't hit. It's like I see it from up above. And Limerick were in six and sevens, they didn't know what to do. Maybe it was them getting used to the new their new centre back and their new they were confused in their communication and everything they were talking to, didn't know what was happening. 
And Galway were a lot hungrier, a lot more into on the breaks. Maybe Limerick's work rate wasn't up at the level, that, and they alluded to after it in their, in their post-match analysis. Um, but also Galway got and hit quickly, and we left two inside very early, and we were brave, and Colin Mannion pushed up. And I think after 25 minutes, you know, they went one inside, they moved one out, and then Cahill went more deeper and weren't as brave, I think, and the ball didn't go in as quick. And maybe there wasn't the targets to go in as quick, but Limerick seemed to choke that for middle third, excuse the language, choke that middle third totally. And with their physicality and their energy, and they just totally dominated. We couldn't win a ball there. And uh, they choked up the space up front in the second half as well, big time, where it doesn't seem to be, didn't seem to have any space, but they dropped the two wing forwards a lot more. Um, and they just seemed to choke that middle third and suffocate us totally. And, you know, we often in the second half, as you know, sir, we hit and probably hit balls in there and there wasn't anyone within 20 yards of the goalie. You know, it landed Nicky Quaid, I don't know how many times, but there's nobody in there. So we lost a bit of shape. Definitely the energy wasn't there. Or the fight wasn't there, which is very disappointing as well in terms of you know, that, that Christmas and buzz. And the, they were buzzing in the first 25 minutes. Really great. Quick ball in, Kevin Cooney. And, and we were winning a lot more prime possession that first 25 minutes. You know, Keenan Fahey caught a great ball. Kevin Cooney was winning, winning a great ball, uh, primary possession high in the sky. So was Conor Whelan. But that didn't happen, you know, from 25 minutes on where Limit just totally took took over. So, um, yeah, no, it was just frustrating to watch. And I suppose, as Sarah said, it was the lack of energy, the lack of fight, where we kind of seemed to give up after Limerick went five or six points up. We seemed to, you know, after that last Kevin Cooney point where he brought us back to level again in the second half, a great score. It just seems to just lack that fight and lack that energy and lack that work rate. Um, that li- and, and that Limerick... Br- that, and the intensity that Limerick brought, uh, which was, I suppose, double, they, they'd really in, increased their work rate massively. And as I said, they choked that middle third and we couldn't win a ball there, really, you know. With that good start, sir, like even Carl Mannion's goal, like, it's, it's a remarkable goal from Carl Mannion when you see the angle he took that strike from. Yeah, like the pass was great. He took it on the, he took it off the shoulder. He used his pace coming in. Great left-handed shot. And it's very hard. Like it's it, it's it's very hard to beat Quaid kind of going across when he stuck it. And we were six up, even though it could have been seven or eight. We, if we, the goal we kind of the chance had chance we got that went up the pitch. They got the point. But after doing all the hurling, uh, we were still only a pint up at half time. You know, that'd be disappointing. And another thing that was there Saturday and Sunday, and none of us kind of referred to it much. But when I was down afterwards. There was a nice breeze. Mm. Both days flown into the hill sixteen end. Now, like you see, if you if you got a go on which you, you could nearly float the ball over, and even against it, it was a night. It was nice enough and it was fresh. It didn't it didn't look that much on on the flags, but when you're down at ground level, it was a fair bit going into both games, going into the hill sixteen. And now Limerick had that the second half, whereas Clare had it the second half. You know, in in their match, but like uh, to me, the most disappointing thing was was kind the lack of our physicality and the lack of our Energy and hunger, like that. Usually, you, that'd be given. And as as uh, the analysts is there, like that, that we had it for about 25, 26, 27 minutes, and then next thing, pop was gone. And like uh, that's what they're going to have to look at. The lads themselves would be disappointed. Like uh, they put in a savage effort all year, and look, they, no one goes out to play bad. But I think uh, it, now isn't the time to panic. I just hope that to hold on to Henry and his management team, like because the last thing you want is another upheaval, like really, because these. The hurlers that are in there, the most, most like uh, on the panel, the, there isn't that many others outside. The people say it should be on, maybe there's some, but like uh, the majority of these will be out if the place they hurl will be there again next year. And you need them there, like because it's you don't get experience. I will feel that's coming through. The, it's their first season, really. Keen and Fahey, like his first season, you know, really coming through. You, you know, they have an island kind of nailing the freeze, kind of becoming a real free taker. He's always a good free taker, but he's he's the free taker now, if you know what I mean. You need all these lads again, and you don't want to kind of dress to me anyway. You don't need drastic change because uh, we're still in Leinster, it's not as strong as most, so like it isn't as cutthroat. And like, definitely, I think what we should be doing really is to, is to try and win a Leinster title, win it. And then you have a few weeks off, and you have a trophy won. You see, after two years now, Henry with all the hurling, he has not done one more than Brian Lohan and Clare. He's there four years, playing great stuff, say this year, no, no title won. You need to win the, the team to get real confidence. It's a different ballgame. You win a Leinster title, you're playing the runners up in Munster, but you're on a high, you're, you're coming from a, a good position, you're coming from a break, and you can reorganize and you can really focus. Now, the two weeks is very short because, like, you're kind of a few days coming down, and then you're a few days getting ready, and there isn't much time even to clean up. To clear up little injuries, it's hard to get there, like you know. 
Sure, just on that, um, physicality is a point you mentioned. Rhino Dwyer was um, speaking on off the ball. I don't know, did you get a chance to hear him? But he was talking that he need that there probably needs to be more physicality in this Galway team. Would you see a lack of physicality as an issue with this team? Yeah, I would. Yeah, uh, they're, they're they're very physical and they're lifting all the weights and training. But there's no one hitting body tackles. When I'm talking about physicality, I'm not talking about we using a whole belt now. And you were talking about using your body. For example, like when Kyle Hayes left the wing back spot the last day, he passed through midfield, he passed through our half back line, he went up nearly to the corner flag, and then he turned in and he kept going. No one, no one. I don't mean the boys after me because they weren't there to catch up to him, but it was lads ahead of him. No one crossed him at all with their body and put him out over the sideline or have a go at it anyway. That's what I'm talking about. Like Limerick, to be fair, they're not they're playing within the rules, but they are using their bodies a lot. Like Keenan Fahey got hard body tackles. Uh, Sean Lang got hard body tackles. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Quinn got hard body tackles. They they were all the, the energy was being sapped with hard body tackles, and you kind of know what's coming with Limerick. Like you know what they're going to do, you know their system, so you better be you have to be prepared for it, and you have to meet them. You can't afford, if to me anyway, you can't afford to back off. That's the one thing you can't afford because if you do, you're going to kind of steamroll you. And to me, as the game went on the last day, that's what actually happened. Like the steamroll that walked out over with. With their physical strength and their, their everything, they were able to hurl and score from outside. But the main thing was like that they were kind of they were able to bully us around the place when it really mattered. Do you see this as maybe an area we need to target now in the off season, Alan? Definitely, but I do worry in terms of we're a bit off in terms of our development because if you look at the the age and the demographic of the team, you're you know your big leaders. Your big leaders and your big men and proven leaders and proven winners. Like Joseph Cooney is going on 32, 33. You know, Garrett McInerney is 32, 33. Dahi Burke is coming on 31, whatever. Park Mannion's coming on 32. Kyle Mannion's coming on 31, 30, 31. So, you know, they are the, the key men and they're the key, and they're the wrong side of 30. And you know, if one if two of them or three of them decide to go or whatever, you know, there's no obvious replacement at the moment in terms of that experience and that physical conditioning and that four or five year experience at inter-county level. So, you know, uh, while Conor Cooney's the same age, you know, his last form, you know, so, you you know, you're bringing on the likes of Tom Monaghan the last day, who's a great player, but, you know, is, is a light, light player. Niall Collins, who is a great stick man, a great player, but compared to the Limit guys, he's like, he's coming like he's, he's, he needs a lot of conditioning. Um, you know, having a small, you know, wouldn't have that physical stature to win, start winning primary possession. So, um, you and when you look at the subs bench, then they're all quite young and they're young. Gavin Lees, they've done no shares. They're all need three or four years. Of, we're well behind Limerick and the Clares, I mean, the Limerick Kenny's in terms of that physical condition. So you would worry, you know, when that D four or five lads decide to move on or if that's next year or the year after, whenever it is, and they will be, you know, it's a young man's game now as well. So you would it's something you would have to worry about in terms of the transition and, and the progress. Um, and a lot of work would need to be put in now in terms of the minors that were some exceptional minors coming through and under 20s. So a huge a huge amount of focus is put into getting them physically ready earlier, maybe, um, and over the next three or four years, getting them up to the, the level of the physicality that's required to win all Ireland's or to compete in the latter stages, especially you know, against the Clares and the Limericks of this world. And Cork are coming out strong as well with, you know, with 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 the, they're probably the unlucky team this year. They're coming with a really good on 20 with squad. You saw them in the 20 final, they're massively physical, they're totally bullied awfully out of it. So they're really invested in that physical approach that uh, and that kind of model of Limerick, you know what I mean, in terms of, yes, unbelievable athletes, unbelievable, but also unbelievable hurlers. Uh, and if you look back to the Galway team that won in 2017, like that forward line were all about six, three, six, four. You know, you had Carl Manny, you had Joe Sakuni, you had Joe Canning, you had Conor Cooney, you had uh, Johnny Glenn, and you had Conor Whelan was the smallest uh, of that yeah. team on the All Ireland, you know, and they're all, as I said, they're all unbelievable athletes, but they're all also unbelievable physicality, but they're also unbelievable stickmen. So that's the modern day poor type, unfortunately. So, you know, we need to start investing in some of those, you know, maybe players who are not as skillful, but who are. Have that level of physicality and that level of um, um, athleticism as well, um, rather than just a small stickman. Um, so maybe that's a, an area of focus and a, maybe an area of concern as well. But that's just an, ob an observation from outside looking in. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with you. Like you know, we just need to kind of look at it closely. And as you say, we we can't afford to lose all these guys. It's okay to say no. that. Just 
There's no one better at the moment. You have to look at their feeling down and out. As you know, Alan, you've played at the top level, you have won and you've lost, we're going to lose more than going to win. They, they're all feeling sick this week. The sooner they get back out of the pub and hurl again, the better for them. Is. They're still good. They're still good. Wait, wait, I agree, sir. We can't lose those players. They're just no. they're just central no. to, to our for our it's the most is this the most important thing to keep all of these players for next year? Like you're talking about the players who are maybe pushing on in their well not pushing on but some players are going into their early 30s and some are maybe reaching the halfway point near 30 is the most important thing for this goal group to keep these players for next year well, I'd say so yeah because like is that, like you know you can't just afford to lose them all it's, it's not an easy bill like and if you look at the Kinkini team I sure TJ Reid is as old as any of our as old and he's running around like young lad the subs of Brahan the last day you know Richie Hogan Walter Welsh uh, Buckley these guys are all and it, yeah. as I agree, sir. Even for the experience alone, and the role model, and yeah. the professional standards that the standards they bring to a group is critical. If they're not going to be starters, and I'm sure they'll all be starters given their performance this year, you know. But and their level of fitness and their and their and their professionalism, their unbelievable ex- role models, and they've done it all, and they've won it, and they've had the experience of winning. But even if just to share the knowledge for the younger lads coming through and bring those younger lads coming through, even if they're not going to be start for the next couple of years. It, I think it's critical, you know what I mean? And they will be starting, obviously, but, you know, I think it's critical to keep that level of experience and level of professionalism and, and people who will drive standards and set standards. Yeah, that's why I think it's important that the management team stay on and just kind of stay to the ship because it's very easy to kind of uh, react when, when you get a bad beating. Like, now we were beaten per, fairly badly or fairly well by Limerick, but you have to take it that you're playing the best team that has been around for the last number of years. A fantastic team and could go on and win four in a row. And like, uh, like uh, they're going for what? At least they're people of six and five or six years. You know, people are forgetting they, they got the one, one, and last one. And now they're going for four in a row. They were together a year or two before that. These are a very professional team and very, very well honed and zoned in and they're playing very, very well. You want to play well, you'd have to be very good to beat them. Now, on the day we weren't, but I still think like the vast majority of these lads are still good enough. Like, and uh, as Alan referred today, you need them for the experience being on the younger fellas. It, it just takes time. You look at Evan Island, Alan, he's in there a good few years. It's only now he's really, you know what I mean? It takes a few years. It isn't just a simple come up from underage and next year walk on a team. Maybe if the team was winning all Ireland, they'd stop him in on one little position, but that them days are nearly gone. Like, and uh, it takes a good while to work on the team. Tim Tom on is only making his way really kind of last year and this year. Like, and uh, there's a good few others in there on the panel that should be pushing on next year. But I still think we need the vast majority of them lads to lead us and along. And as, as Alan says, to set the standard because they set the standard in training when all is said and done. And that's that's what you have to have. You have to have the bar very high. Yeah, no, it, it feels critical there, as we've mentioned, to keep these players on. There was a few questions coming in, Alan, obviously, about do people expect this management group to stay? But I guess Sarah touched on it. For stability and for this group, like I think some people have to realise we have reached back-to-back All-Ireland semi-finals as well. It does really feel critical for this management group to stay on, though, Alan, doesn't it? Yeah, like they have a three-year term, obviously, so they're in their second year. So um, I'm sure Henry will be, and his team, were, you know, he's a very good team with Damien and Kevin and Richie and, and the rest of the background team. So I'm sure they will be hurting badly from this. I'm sure they have points to prove as well in terms of their own legacy. And um, But more importantly, I suppose, it's, it's that stability and that I'm sure they've learned a lot as well from this year as well. And they've learned a lot from last year. So... You would hope that they, you know, a new thing would shake it up a little bit, and you know, you're trying to relearn and re adjust to each other, and a new. So I think it's very now. It is difficult, obviously, for Henry going up and down to Kilkenny. He's a young kid, so it is, it is obviously it's a, a huge commitment. So, um, but you would hope he would stay on the man if he's, he's a winner, as everyone says. Yeah, you know, yes, they probably got some stuff that they that'll haunt them over the last number of, uh, of days, um, as the players and as as a collective group. But you know, you know. They had the Leinster final one, I suppose, and that was a that was a that was a killer that that last minute goal or and Killian Buckley, and that would have put them in a semi final against Clare, and who knows we could be in an Ireland final this week if, if that goal hadn't gone in, you know. Um, so um, I think they'll have learned a lot from this year. They've learned a lot more about their players. They are a relatively new management team in terms of inter county. You know, Henry has has an unbelievable success with club, but it's still inter county is probably as Sarah will know. From his huge experience of intercounty level, it's it's probably it's a lot different in club as well. So they're on they're on a constant lear- learning curve. But he is, you know, he's a proven winner. He's the best in the game in terms of a player. He's he's 
hugely professional in terms of his his attitude and his commitment and his understanding and his people relationship. And I hear, only hear great things about him from the players as well. So, uh, and and the respect and credibility he commands, I think it would be it would be critical that he stays on and um, tries to progress the group even further. I know he's disappointed this week, and he referred to it in his interviews afterwards that he didn't feel much progress has been made. But look, he's probably built a he's built he's brought on some players. You know, probably he he'll probably want to bring on a lot more next year again um, to add to the panel. And that depth they're still lacking. It probably a little bit of depth. I'd imagine maybe Sir, you might disagree or agree, but they are still lack. And you know, I suppose we were unlucky this year in terms of some of our key players lost a little bit of form. Some three or four players who you would have guaranteed would have been starters, maybe weren't starters and come on the last day. And from their club form, they probably lost a little bit of form during the season and. You know that probably inhibited the inhibited that level of depth as well um, from the bench. So, um, but I'm, I'm I'm kind of going on a long way around it. But yeah, look, it it it'll be great for him and the more senior players to stay on and give it one last whack and kind of build on and learn from the mistakes of this year. The Henry Sheffins obviously talked about that he didn't see progress this year. He said that. You haven't really seen progress, but if you are, if you are to assess this campaign, what are the positives? To, what's the biggest positive from this management group and the goal of senior heritage this year? Well, like through the season, they showed that they, like they didn't. They were down so many points against Kilkenny the first day, came back. They were down twelve against Dublin the next day, came back. Were, were again eight down against Kilkenny, came back actually and got caught by the goal. They kept fighting back from kind of digging holes and kind of getting out of holes. They, they showed they had the character to fight, like, you know, but the most, like, they had a good display against Tipperary. I know they only won by two points, but it felt a lot more like they, they won most positions on the pitch, and that's how it was more, say, disappointing the last day. So, like, one bad game doesn't make them a bad team. That's the thing I'd be worried about, that some of these guys be kind of listening to all that, saying, oh, they're, they're old and this, he's not up to it. Like, the age to me doesn't come into it. If you're good enough at 18 or at 38, that might sound old. If you're good enough, you're good enough. But there's very few of being at 38. But all these boys, even off season, Paul, they hold themselves in great shape. There's no leg like, coming back in training, tooth thrown over weight like out and it's thrown over weight. That, that, them days are gone. These guys are watching their diet the whole time and look at the might that themselves do so. But they'll come, they'll come back in in good shape. And, uh, you know, you'll find them that the lads at last form, they'll go back to their clubs and they'll still play Britain for the clubs like again and you're saying, good God, how can you not do that same co But that can happen. But like if they could get back around to the same situation next year and get into a Leinster final next year, which I think they're well capable of getting into, and it's probably going to be Kilkenny again, the big one to me next year will be to get into the Leinster final and win it and relax a little bit in because you have the three or four weeks off and then play whoever it is to run it up in Munster. It's, it's a different campaign altogether. People are don't realise like that. I think it's Cork that scored another point against Limerick. Limerick wouldn't have qualified at all out of Munster. So it's a very thin line, especially early on, like when, when teams are kind of just coming and coming, they're not fully tuned to the hint. Like you, when you meet the Munster team now in the semi final, or do you know that you're meeting them at full pelt? They have their weaknesses gone, they have all their, you know what I mean? They're at, they're at, they're at high level, like they're t- top top form like whereas early on in the first or second rounds, the teams might be that far, they, they'll think they're advanced, but they will improve with wins the whole time. So, like, uh, you know, why next year looks a long way around, I could still see Gaul being heavily involved next year because once one good win can change the whole scenario. Is there a player for you, Alan, because you have to hand it to the management group, they have brought two players this year. Every player got their chance between league and championship within that goal panel. But if there is a player for you that's the biggest positive for Galway for 2023, who is it? A player? Yeah. Um, a player. Let me see. A new player, is it? That's come yeah, on. Yeah, a new player that's come through. Like, who would you regard as the positive? I think um, Kev, uh, young Cooney. Yeah. yeah, Kevin Cooney would be. Yeah, Kevin Cooney. Yeah, I think Kevin Cooney. He's proven like he got a he won great ball. He got a great a couple of points or a point definitely second half. He set up Cahal Mannion's goal. Like his dad had been part of that pass. And I played with his dad and he was gave some unbelievable passes. Um, but I think Kevin, he's a different player, he's a different animal compared to our usual nippy forwards or our small, skillful forwards. He's a ball winner, he's direct. Um, you know, even young Keenan Fat, you know, it's his second year, he started to show a little bit more progress this year compared to last year. Um, 
Um, but I think Young Cooney would have been. I know you had, you had Jack Grealish and Darren Morrissey coming onto the scene last year. Um, until they were last year's breaks when Keenan was on last year. But I think this year, for the new guys, I think we would have to say Young Kevin Cooney. Um, he's physical. He's he's pacey. He can score. He can win his own ball. He's good in the air. He's direct. He's good vision. Then, he's he's very good in the air as well. He's yeah. a great pawn. Of, yeah, and, very and, good. And he's able to sidestep on both feet. Yeah, most guys have a kind of a sidestep, but he has a both ways. He will keep improving. I think you know yeah, what I mean. Good he's, vision, he's, like as it's proven. Yeah, there's a lot more in him. Like there's only now, there's only now he's coming good. Really, like it's better he'll get if he's personal. Yeah, his younger brother John as well. You know. I haven't seen much of him, but he is a very similar type style. He could be a lad worth investing in too, uh, in terms of that physicality, directness, ball winner, pace, running direct to play, and different to our, you know, different to our normal skillful right handed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kevin, the biggest positive for you as well, sir. Ah, yeah, like it was basically Kevin Coney. I saw him playing the colleges for the Saint Rafers, and even he's 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 he's. he's the, the the jump he has off the ground, he has that ability like to clear, to come off the ground like uh, like an Australian rules footballer, get the ball in there. It's just all he needs is more confidence in himself. Like he's well capable of putting through and sticking himself. Where he's inclined to lay it off, which is no harm. It's a good thing in in the you know in anyone's language. Like in the you know as as like definitely young Keen and Fahey is beginning to start to come good as well. Uh, I see him playing most matches now with the college. He used to wing back, centre back. To me, now he's better face as well, but he's a good, strong bit of stuff, and he's kind of he's kind of getting there again. Tom Annan is fully getting there, and I said, like you know, um, you know, Ni Young Nyland is is you know he's he's the free taker now, like and he he he's, he'll nail Nile out of ten or that. That's as much as you can, you know. You have to give one or two, but like he gives you the feeling taking him that he's that he's actually going to score them, like you know. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with 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 Mar with Ballin there, like um, John Cooney. You know, he's a big, he's an orthodox, he's different as well, but. Maybe we have to look for a few unorthodox fellas, maybe bring a bit of real kind of physical sprint into the game. But like they are around, it's just a matter of the lads will have to go hunting again and maybe maybe shake it up. But I still think the majority of that panel will still be the majority of the panel next year, once that management team stays on. Yeah, it definitely is hernish as well. They were even non talking subs this year that it was their first year in the panel that maybe might get a proper look at them next year as well. Um but just if we are to kind of go back to the first half, because we, we kind of did touch on it there, but we were just touching on some of the topics about this management group and what's next for Goa. Alan, it's been highlighted on every platform in the media. We're six points up, 112 to 16 after 24 minutes. Nicky Quay goes down for a debatable um, contact lens issue. But in one way, it, it has some effect. But it doesn't in an order because Galway do still have chances chances after that moment. Yeah, did the, did the actual goal or goal scoring chance where John or Kevin Cooney burst through and gave it to Bino and uh, he pulled in and it was a very lucky save. Obviously, just hit my, uh, my case's hurl and then they yeah. went to score a point. It was, it was a four point swing. Was that before or after the Nicky Quaid incident? That was after. Yeah, after. He went down. I think that was a big turning point as well. That would put us nine up because I think we're six up at that stage. And then it went to five, and then they went down a score and spree, obviously. And they get into their mojo, or they're crisscrossing into Aaron Galan and Shane Flanding into that corner. Dara Donovan took over as well. And they got one, look at that though, isn't they? they got one really big momentum. You could feel it in the stadium. They, there's a lot of turnovers and blocks. And next thing Dara Donovan got, and he pointed the score, and the place erupted from Limerick. And you could feel the swing. Maybe that was the point after the goal, I'm not sure, or the goal chance. But uh, yeah, no, Nicky Quay went down definitely. I was watching it and you could see them, they were they were totally in six and sevens in the back. They didn't know where they were. Um, because I was watching them and they were, you know, even for that puck out where in in if I hit it over the top and Carl Mann was all on his own, or Cannon was all one of them was all on his own and nobody on him. He's in it and he went got a free. He sold it through and got a free. Uh, but that happened several times and they didn't hit yeah. The, the runner. There was numerous occasions where there's a goalie man in over their halfbacks and all on his own in acres of space, and nobody tracking him. So the 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 Limerick structure was in disarray at that stage, and I think the Declan Hannon loss at that stage was 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 huge because you know he, they didn't they didn't they were they were totally miscommunicated and they were didn't you could see them shouting at each other they didn't know where they were or what was going on or what structure they needed to implement. But then Nicky Quay gone down, they got loads of four or five guys in, um, they settled down, they got the structure realigned. And two things happened there. We changed our structure. Right? 
after 26 minutes where we went one inside and out, Brian went out or Connor went out. And secondly, Limerick changed, got their structure and communication lines clarified and Limerick work rate dramatically increased as well. And they were the, they were the big turning points. I think our structure changed. We went, Connor went, Cahill went a little bit deeper. We went more negative, protecting that lead before half time maybe. And they then went on the aggress, uh, got their structure sorted at the back. Um, and their work rate dramatically increased as well. And we, they choked the middle third and they got on a lot more ball. And then their inside line, Aaron Gillan and Flanagan's movement increased and pr- dramatically improved. They created that space in that corner for them as well. And they got three or four points from that corner alone from Darren Donovan crossing it into Flanagan or Gillan. And that they got four or five points, as it, and they brought it back to from six points to one point before half time. And it, there, and there it, felt, like, and it felt like Dublin Mayo last week, where they done all the hurling and they were only one point up. And you know, you felt that the onslaught was coming. Yeah, they were much happier going in at half time yeah. than we were. We done all the hurling for most of them, only a point up. It was kind of a body blow, really, and it felt like that. Is, is, is part of the struggle there where we? Drop numbers back, and as Alan was talking about there, nearly protecting the lead because, like in that first half, Brian Cannon kind of coming deep, nearly to the half back line, picking up ball and sending diagonal ball in. And it wasn't just Brian Cannon; we were sending diagonal ball in that was hard for this Limerick team to defend. But then when we dropped the bodies back, we didn't really have that option. Is that part of the struggle? Well, it must be. Well, like it's hard to fathom. You have to look at it closely a few times, but like definitely. Early on, we were moving well off the ball and on the ball. And as Alan referred to, they were able to get the ball into space. But the good times that we got the ball into, it, no one challenging the goal at all. But once, once, uh, once we crowded, like we kind of crowded as well to draw back, and then Limerick crowded as well. Like Limerick half back, the midfield to me got completely on top. So they cut off the supply going in, and the next thing they were able to get this diagonal ball across to Flanagan and, and, and across to Gillan, like they're good at. They could even afford to play Peter Casey out near the centre because usually he'd be lethal inside corner. He didn't even play corner, he, didn't, he came out more, didn't have to. And uh, he got a point, but he was well held, but like he wouldn't be in his favourite position. He was a good bit away from goal. Like having him around the middle doing the donkey work, he's more of a natural to score. But once they, once they, once they like, clapped on to our puck out and got on top of it, they got really on top. But the biggest thing to me was the, the lack of energy. Now, maybe it was easy for me to say sitting above and stand, but like, God almighty, like, they're training all year. Like, you know, and it isn't, it isn't lack of training, whether they're undercooked or overcooked. I think that, I think as a management team, they'll have to look at it. There, mm. just one thing for me with the puck out that it's kind of been a common team all year, and I just don't understand it. When Aidan Murphy gives the puck out to Gareth McInerney, Gareth McInerney gives it back to him, and then he just drives it long. Yeah, well, like you could nearly drive this far from the original puck out. But three, yeah. but the modern teams are doing now when you give it to one in the full back line, let's say either corner back or the full back, the modern thing would be that you run with the ball. You have it in your hand and you lay it off to a wing back. You draw a man. Oh, Limerick are good at the 20 or 30 yard pass. And they put four in the full back line to get the puck out. And then once you give them the easy puck out, they're good at 20 or 30 yard pass. They come in triangles and they'll work it up the pitch. That's that's the modern way of, of doing it. Like, you know, but what we were doing is we we're trying to get it over the half back line. See, in the, in the first half, we we're getting it over the half back line. But in the second half, we they, they came back deep and there was a nice little bit of a breeze in it. It mm-hmm. kept coming back and back. But like the middle third, like that's where that's where Limerick had all the bodies and Ellen Rutter were there. Like they won all the hard graft balls and we just didn't seem to be. Whereas in the first half we were keeping the ball moving, all of a sudden to a stop in there, and in all the scrapping, they seemed to come out on top of the hurricane and they got the went from strength to strength. Like, you know, whereas if you looked at other matches like uh if Kinney worked the ball up, like they're kind of a modern enough now with you know, with Derek Ling there to try to work it up and to be fair to clear in the second half. They threw, they threw caution to the wind and they put like the likes of uh, Fitzgerald and all these fellas below me feet. They just went through the tackles, through them, through their bodies, through and carried it through. Shane O'Donnell, not that big in stature, but very strong, but throwing as a whole way. They put their bodies on the line. Like we didn't seem to have the energy to do that, you know. So it isn't that the lads didn't mean to do it, but whatever, for, for whatever reason, we just weren't doing that. Even early on in that second half, Limerick had a few opportunities when it was kind of 116 to 114 and you were thinking were we just nearly going to weather this storm and then it was obviously demoralising nearly, you could say Alan going in only a point ahead, but the Limerick goal, it hits the crossfire and you're kind of like, we might get away with this one, but yeah. then 
when the flick just comes and Limerick finished the goal, that's even more demoralising yeah. to take. If you looked, if you looked at the say Claire, they hit a right good shot, great save by Murphy and goes with up in the cross, but that could go into the net over the bear, came back out and the Kilkenny like got got a hand to it and pawed it out. Like they didn't get that break. Sure, Gillan, when he took the shot, he was so sure he was scoring. He had turned, he had wheeled out thinking he had scored. But the next thing, the ball comes out and then he's on again. Like it's, it's just unfortunate because we had a good group here back there. But that, they're the ins and outs of the game. Now, whether that would have made a big difference or not, it would make a big difference. It would give you energy as well. That, they're all sapping energy out here. And all the little breaks wins against Scalway. Again, uh, not, uh, Sean Lamb was definitely fouled for, for one of the goals and didn't get the free. You know, ref, ref waves it on. Next thing winds up in the net. Like they're, they're the fortunes of war. Like, but you have to take them belts really. Like you get some of them, you get more than you want. But that's 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 what makes the game so good, I suppose. Really. Yeah, you were very lucky there. If you take the 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 Galway chance, like it was just by chance to hit off my case's hurl. Like he yeah. <laughs> pure fluke to hurl. And then their goal, like hit the crossbar, and then Paul just flicks it, and it just. Just natural reactions to swing at it and it just goes back into as as Sarah says, Galan had, had, had turned his back to it nearly and he was turned around yep. again and it just landed at his, at his feet. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a great finish on the ground in fairness to him. But uh, that was that uh, that sucked the, the life out of goal at big time and that put I think Limerick four up at that stage. And uh, that was a huge momentum shift, I think. And even Henry referred to it as a kind of the change up the turning point in the game. But they still probably you know, as Sarah said, the disappointing thing was the lack of energy, the lack of fight, and the lack of physicality, where they kind of just threw in the towel after, not threw in the towel, but it just seemed to, the energy seemed to be sucked out of them after they went six down or seven down, and the fight was kind of nearly gone, um, or so it seemed in the, in, I said, nobody goes out to do that, but it just seemed whatever energy levels were there, that they didn't have the energy levels to compete at that stage. And as well, they forced the puck outs as well. They forced the puck outs either they put up on them and forced them to go long, and Hayes was unbelievable under the puck outs and, and that middle third, they were on the breaks. Either they won a primary position or they, they hooved up all the breaks and we could, and even if we won it, they turned us over. Yeah, that was the big... Oh, they, are, they are a big, strong, physical team. There's no doubt about that. There's no point in saying... Well, grind us down, didn't they? And, yeah. you know, we, well, we've got to remember they're one of the greatest teams of all time as well. Um, and they're, you know, they're a team of, of freaks in terms of their physicality and their hurling. But uh, um, so they do... Go, like we're not the only team they've grounded down and, and worn out and uh, and 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 overcome in, in in the third quarter and fourth quarter, you know. Alan, why do we struggle with our distribution um, from the back in the second half? Why did we? Yeah. Um, why they seem to choke us big time, and I'd yeah. say when we looked up, there wasn't much options. I'd imagine no, no uh, movement. No movement. So the movement stopped. And we lost our shape a little bit, probably one inside, and they should have all the chance. I mean, you look up and you see three or four green giants, like it's very hard to get over them. But they seem to get their structure really well. They seem to choke us in the middle third. There's no space uh, in, around our half forward line and into our full forward line at all. When, when you look at it, they, they choked like we did in the first half, they choked us and they didn't have loads of space down there in where they could hit into. And, and their movement dramatically improved. So, work rate dropped. Energy level dropped, movement dropped. So the guys looking up had no options. I think, but from my reading of it, looking at it now, I have to look back and I probably haven't had a chance to look back at a read the analysis. But just um, my instinct was, it looked like they choked, and you know they dropped a good bit. The half forward line, the midfielders dropped. The half, it looked like it was totally crowded around that middle third, and they choked us there, and we couldn't get on a break. We couldn't win a ball. When we looked up, we had nothing to hit, and there was very little. There was only one inside, and. The, the 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 spaces were cut out by by the limit guys and we'd know where to hit and then when we did hit we'd been over our heads and there was 30 yards of space uh, and there's nobody there a few times as uh, maybe you can recollect I mean, you, you can recall that as well where i think three or four times went into into no man and nicky quay came out and there wasn't anyone within 30 yards of his goals so um that's just from my instinctual recollection of it Maybe what do you think, Cyril? Was, was yeah, like we were, we were choked out, we were getting no ball in at all, like to Kevin Cooney or, or to, to Wheel in the second half. Did you? But like as you, they're doing that, that's their platform every day, really, when they get on top to do choke. And they're very big across that back line midfield. And they won that battle that you say that middle third completely in the second half. The big thing was in the first half, we were letting the ball go fast and kind of into space and getting onto it. That all stopped. And once that stopped, we were in trouble. And I suppose, like Zee's brothers talking this time, but when the goals do, when you get these hard knocks, like with the physicality and with the, with the kind of flow going against you. And as I said, like, there, was not, there was a stronger breeze now than people thought going into the, 
into the hill 16 and it was hard like you know it was it was lovely for them floating it and once they got once they got the mojo going there was there was there was no way back but as Alan said they're like you're playing against one of the best teams ever like if this was Kilkenny doing this or Tipper Cork they'd be all raving about them uh, like uh, older Limerick people can't have to pinch themselves to say God are we going for four in a row but they are because they're very very good a good structure good management team lack for nothing in the build up like uh, and uh, you know, it all helps. Like, and the, like they, they're going to make hay where the sun is shining, and this this is a special group. Like, you know, and they have the they have the backup. But the only thing about the backup is backup always looks good when you're winning. The subs can come on and play well. Sometimes in the, when the team breaks up, you might find that the subs mightn't be as good as they look. But uh, they're, they're again they're going to be hot favourites for the All Ireland, even against Kilkenny. And Kilkenny will fancy themselves. But like Limerick, you'll find in the bookie shops that Limerick will be still the hot favourites to win the All Ireland. Plus, Paul, they, they squeezed up in the puck outs, so we didn't get much primary possession for puck outs. And also, their work rate dramatically increased. So, when we got the ball, we were either turned over or we were hitting the ball under pressure. So, we couldn't find, we hadn't time on the ball to find the perfect pass or to find that pocket of space or the early runner. So, we weren't allowed to hit early uh, or get quick ball in when the runs were made. And then, when we looked up under pressure, if we did get it free, the runs were blocked or the runs were covered. So, their combination of squeezing up in the puck outs and then squeezing, when we did go short, they squeezed up. And I might they turned over three or four times, didn't they? Tom Arcee two wise from, from bad puck outs. And uh, I think Joe Cooney got turned over from Col- from Colin Co- uh, from young um, Boylan at one stage and got a point for Graham McKay um, from a turnover. I think Joe was trying to pass to Dahi Burke. So they squeezed up and the work rate dramatically increased as well. So we had no time on the ball and and we weren't winning the ball, first of all. And we did get ball, we had no time. And we were under massive pressure striking it or we were turned over. So, you know, if the earlier ones were made, they were shut down by the by forcing the delay of the early delivery, you know. With that as well, Alan, even if you look in the second half, Tom Monaghan gets a score where he'll work it through the lines. Yeah. I don't think enough of that happened like either in the second half. No, it didn't. It didn't. And he got, he took a shot from distance and scored it brilliantly and it worked. But again, I suppose that was near the end and it was nearly over that stage. There were six, seven down at that stage, as I recall, it brought it back to six. Um, and they didn't do that enough. And that was um, but that was that has to be put down to Limerick's work rate and desire and hunger and physicality and just shutting them down. So we've mentioned, obviously, that it's vital for this group to stay on, um, or the, the current management group to stay on, obviously. But obviously, we can't deny Limerick with a better team. There's no complaints from a goal perspective whatsoever. The better team won, the better team are in the all Ireland final. But where do this group go from here now? I said they're, they're looking to go back for the club for a start and to get back hurling again and they'll get a long break to, till the Welsh Cup is all the beginning of the year. But I really think that they should aim. I know if I was old team inside the dressing room, I'd have Linster final, Linster winners. Like they should go and win the Linster title. That's the big one that they should forget about All Ireland. That will come afterwards if you're good enough to win the Linster. And it comes a lot easier by winning that Linster title. Get a, get a cup on the table for, for themselves and for, for Henry. Just get that little bit of extra confidence. They're good enough to do it. Look at in 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 in, in Linster, you're going to have Carlo and you have Antrim and you have Dublin and you have Wexford and Kilkenny. But the top thing there will be Kilkenny. You're going to find that if we play anyway up to form at all, you're going to be in the final again. But I, I think they're well capable of winning it. And it, it puts things in, in the different, like now everyone is down now. But when you start again, it goes, you don't feel that you're going, you get, get into a list of final win it, you're back in the big time again. And then you have the few weeks off and you're playing the runners up uh, in, in, in Munster. For example, if you were playing, say, Clare now on Sunday rather than, than Limerick, Clare and Galway, sure, you could toss, it doesn't matter what form you have going into to, to take a, a life of its own. You know what I mean? A completely different kind of a game. And that's, I think that's the way we have to hit. And as Alan said, they're trying to get a few more players through and maybe change, try to get a bit more physical on the pitch. But the boys will know that themselves. They'll, they'll reassess what they've done. And they'll, like they'll always go back and have a look at the year and, and figure out what, what, how they went wrong and how they can improve. That's what management is all about, really. Are you along similar lines, Alan? Yeah, and look at <laughs> as a as Sir will know, like, and he said it to us when we were with Clarenbridge. You never know how far you are away, how near or how, how far you are away from success. And you could, sometimes all it takes is a win. So, if they, like Cyril says, they win a Leinster final, right? They're into semi final. They get the probably that three or four weeks break to prepare properly, cure up the injuries, get form back. And then you're not you're not meeting the Munster champions at that stage, which is more likely Limerick. Uh, and then a good performance there, and you, you just, then you find yourself in an Ireland final, and then happen in an Ireland final. So you, you know you're that close actually, but you're that far away as well. Yeah. So um, it yeah. is about getting back. It is about you know 
again, reassessing, reevaluating, learning from the mistakes, bring in, they have to build more depth. They just have to build more depth and maybe more ball winners as well. Um, and, and look at the physicality, look at the, fit, the, the physical fitness, the regime. Why did they, they peter out after 25 minutes? Um, was it a, was it a, was it a game plan or was it a mental just, you know, a fear of winning or what was it? And see, and then build on that because, and as Cyril, Far, as Cyril says, if you can w win Leinster, that builds momentum, then you're on a winning run. Maybe get a good run in the league as well um, and get the, get that structures and conference in the league because winning is a habit. And then into the, into the um, Leinster Championship win the Leinster and then who knows what happens from there and the, the confidence they would get from beating Kilkenny and Finchley getting over that line of losing the last three or four finals as well you just don't know you know it's, it's funny momentum is funny um, and you can't underestimate it um, look what Kilkenny did now after beating like if Kilkenny lost against Galway the last day you know they were you know that would probably happen similar yesterday but they had huge after winning that they gave them a huge boost and like you know, not many give them a chance against Clare. Most people talk they would beat Clare, but obviously Clare were played a hand in that themselves and their own undoing. But uh, you know, the Kenny are in the final now. You know, and they only beat Galway. They shouldn't have beaten Galway, really. Uh, you know, all things being equal, that was a free goal at the end again. Um, you know, who would have written what could happen in that corner? <laughs> One of the dab in the last two or three minutes of all the mistakes, and then the kick, and you couldn't write it. Um, you know, and Galway could be in the final today. So it's sports is funny that you just don't you never know how near or far you, you are you away from success at any given time, uh, and, and from year to year it can totally change. You might think you're down and out now, but you know momentum can switch next year. Find one or two players, players find form again, and boom. Um, look at us at Clarence Bridge. Even we were written off. We were an old team, won a Larne final. You know, sir, remember you were in the dressing room when you yeah. predicted that that day we beat ye. We couldn't believe we thought you were we thought you were daft. But we, down, we, got, we had momentum and we got a great run and we went down, we came from nowhere to win all Ireland. So you just never know. Like if you told us that time we were going to win it, we told, we, like we said, you'll be, you're crazy. But you were right. And we went on and we won it. And you, you just never know. Um, uh, and things can click. So I think, you know, they were very close to winning a Leinster. Who knows if they won that? Who knows what confidence that might have given them? You know, we don't know the dent in confidence losing that was that that was gut-wrenching loss um you know it was horrific and we all were sick in the stadium that day when that happened that goal especially against kenny you know we've done it so many times to everyone it was just sickening and that i suppose you can't underestimate the psychological blow that had subconsciously to them as well you know yeah but the funny thing is while we're talking here now and hopefully this time next year we could be talking about going on our final because yeah. you know Sport is fickle and sport is funny, but there's plenty of hurdles in Galway. It's a matter of getting the right blend and maybe get a bit more physical on the pitch. Like, you know, it's fine having the nice hurdles, but you have to have the blend as well. But they're there, like, it's only a matter of finding them. And Like, uh, you know, if we find a bit of form next year, it wouldn't surprise me at all that we shoot right through Lynch. So that's what I'd be trying to do. Get the break in and then you play whoever comes out of Munster, the runners up. And you're, you're in a far better position. You get the week off. You have kind of a week in the way, say, and some of the, some of the top, Carton House and so many places, and then you're ready for the for you know get a few injuries, try and tear it up, and you're ready for action. Like you know, this other way, it's very fast. Like it reminds me a bit of a fast sport. So you're kind of ticking the boxes and playing, playing, playing. Like next thing you're kind of run out of steam. If, if you look last year, we were in a puck of ball against the final, beaten. We yeah. should have beaten. We should have beaten Limerick last year. Like all the wise we had in that first half uh, against Limerick in the last year semi final, and then the few mistakes we made uh, in uh, in the last few minutes, giving a few balls away. Their bench, uh, and they got they just had a little bit more composure last year, and they've done the one they've done the one the All Ireland. Like we were that close, like that's how close it is. So you know, from year to year, it, it just it can as Cyril said, it takes on every year it takes on a life of its own. And uh, yeah, when it's, you're in there with the one good seventy minutes being in All Ireland final again. Just before we um, do finish, lads, uh, Sarah, just coming to you first, then I'll you know, obviously jump in. Who do you feel would be in the all star conversation now from a Galway perspective? Well, well, you see, when you don't be into the big one or win the semi final or final, you're not having many. As well, Connor Whelan will be in it, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no doubt about it. He, he will be an all star, I think. If, if there's any justice at all, I think he has to be. Mm -hmm. Now, there's other players that played very well, but not like uh, when you don't win, say, even winning the league. You're going to get one, aren't you, really, this year? Yeah. But it's uh, going to be Whelan or nobody, I don't think. Yeah. You know? I, I, 
Yeah, like to be fair to Conor Whelan, he had a fantastic year. Mm-hmm. Like when it was times where he was on his own to perform in Torch Arena, but others were both hot and cold. But he's he's the one to me that has to be an all star. I think uh, he's the one. If you're given a free bet for charity, he's the one to be backing from Galway. There's no doubt about that. I'd have to agree. And even the last year, unbelievable first half. He got a great point in the second half, and you know it just got starved of ball or got thrown out into the middle third where it was choked. So you know he still had a really brilliant maybe 35, 40 minutes. Um, the last day, um, but everyone else faded. The whole team faded, unfortunately, in the last in the la- in the last thirty minutes, whatever it was. Um, but you know, he's two men of the matches in a row, three men of the matches in a row, whatever it was. You know, outstanding, yeah. a standing forward, a standing ball winner, a standing individual. Um, I think he has to be nailed on, doesn't he, sir? Really, it does yeah? Is that just- be lucky? I think, to be honest with you, in terms of the conversations, I we'll probably only get one. That's all, yeah. Like uh, when you don't win or not in the final, you're not mm-hmm. going to get the shake up. That's the way it is. But I think any hurling man uh, picking fair would be picking Conor Whelan on the All Star team. There's no doubt about that. No matter where you pick him, like, he's, he's a fantastic player. Like, you know, and he has a great future ahead of him, the whole time. He, he really only get like he's, he's mature now into a great player, like, and he's he's going to turn into a great leader, when, you know, give another year or two. Yeah, he'd certainly be one um, you'd expect to pick up an All-Star later in the year. Obviously, Kilkenny and Limerick are probably going to have the majority of the All-Stars, probably thrown in with one or two player players as well. Yeah, yeah. That's just the way the All-Stars work. Obviously, it was a disappointing um, 2023, the way it finished for Galway and then, but still positives to take away for the campaign. And all these players, before they know it, will be back in to club championship action. But that's all we have time for on our show today. Um, thanks a million to Sarah Farb and Alan Gerrans for jumping on. Thanks, See you, lads.